Hello and welcome to the Musical Instrument Investigator. Bit of an odd video today, a bit more of a news story, but you'll see that we're here on the website of uh, German violin virtuoso David Garrett, child prodigy, crossover star, superstar, whatever you want to call him. And the reason that we're on his website is because recently he bought a uh, Guarneri del Gesù violin. In fact, it was this particular one that was sold in June at a Goots auction. Uh, for anyone that didn't see any of my previous videos, um, I'll put a little kind of link up here in the corner to my video on this particular auction. So one interesting thing about this particular auction is that the violin ended up selling for a lot less than people expected. The estimate was four to four and a half million euros and it only sold for 3.385 million euros. So that's quite a big difference. So I've since been told that apparently there's a big uh, crack on this instrument, potentially a sound post crack, which would affect the value quite a lot. Um, but I haven't seen any evidence of this. I haven't seen a conditioner report, but I'm told that that is one of the main reasons. If you do zoom in a fair bit, um, you can see some potential evidence that this may be the case, but I don't know that for sure. That's just kind of what I've heard. Um, so you might ask the question, how do we know that David Garrett bought this instrument? Well, uh, an eagle-eyed member on a forum that I frequent um, posted a link to this Teresio listing. So Teresio being the big auction house in the US that also do auctions in Germany and the UK and they do dealing as well. They have this archive of kind of historical instruments and important instruments. And here we see the exact same um, violin, the Pasquier. Some of the dates are a little bit different between the uh, two listings, but you can see that the figure on the back and kind of the wear on the lower bouts on the violin um, are, are the same. So it is the same violin. And if we go down a little bit, we'll see the provenance until 2022, Regis Pasquier. Uh, then it's sold by Claude Agutz. Here we are on Agutz auction. And now um, David Garrett. So another way that we know that David Garrett bought this particular instrument is because if we go onto his uh, website, go to the About Me page, go down here, we'll see a link for Guarneri del Gesù. We'll... Um, click on this and it says I've been passionate about violin since the day I started playing one maker attracted my attention from the very beginning Bartolomeo Giuseppe Guarneri also known as Del Gesù I was particularly fascinated with the creativity he exhibited throughout his life his never ending search for something new and innovative inspired me since there is no proper archive on online about his incredible work I've collected many photos over the years to create this website so we'll see here that he's actually created uh, a website and also a club so we'll get into that kind of a little bit later but this is all kind of supports the fact that he has in fact bought this violin which is very interesting um, so just to go back a little bit to um, the man himself uh, David Garrett in case you kind of don't know much about him so uh, he's a bit of a kind of superstar virtuoso as it says here I'm not going to read into it kind of uh, too much but he's played with many top orchestras with lots of famous kind of uh, musicians etc uh, etc et uh, and a crossover artist that kind of spans many different genres you'll see here on YouTube I'm not going to play this because it's going to get copyrighted but he's uh, done a cover of uh, Viva La Vida by Coldplay here it's got 117 million views on YouTube he also has some other kind of big um, videos he also does kind of normal classical stuff and other film kind of work etc etc um, he's obviously had experience with Del Gesù um, violins because he had the Prince Doria uh, on loan so he has had uh, previous experience with uh, Del Gesù violins uh, one thing to note up here uh, is basically just even from being very young he was kind of notably quite gifted um, he was signed to uh, Deutsche Grammophon at the age of 13 studied in Juilliard um, student of Perlman uh, even Yehudi Menuhin was kind of speaking about him so without kind of going too much into it uh, a very very talented musician 
uh, or of multiple uh, kind of genres really so definitely an interesting person to uh, to talk about so uh, I'll put all the links and everything into the uh, description so you can check it out for yourself but yeah essentially uh, David Garrett has bought um, the uh, Guarneri del Gesù violin that was for sale at Agut's and this is backed up by his own uh, website and also by the uh, Teresio article here uh, which you can have a look at um, so what we're going to have a, a look now at is we're going to read his website and see what that's all about so this is Guarneri uh, del Gesù um, dot com so yeah let's kind of take a quick read through this you're gonna have to bear with me and uh, see what he has to uh, to say about this there's a fair bit of text but I think I'm gonna read through it because I think it's interesting so just bear with me or just stop the video if you're <laughs> getting bored but uh, let's just go through the foreword because it's quite short at the moment so dear all violin enthusiasts I've been passionate about violence since the day I started playing for me, this goes hand in hand since the sound you want to project is deeply connected to your choice of instrument. Ever since I was a child, I searched through my father's library and collected photos of instruments, placing them in various folders marked with the designated violin maker. One maker attracted my attention from the very beginning, Giuseppe Bartolomeu Guarneri, also known as Del Gesù. I was particularly fascinated with the creativity he exhibited throughout his life. His never-ending search for something new and innovative inspired me. But enough about me. This website was created for two reasons. First, I wanted to present a full archive of all the divine work Del Gesù produced. Contrary to popular opinion, opinion, he was and is not only equal to Antonio Stradivari, but in my opinion, superior. That's a very uh, controversial point. That's going to uh, kind of uh, get a few people talking there. Uh, from a violins, uh, violinist perspective, he produced the most incredible sounding violins. It is often suggested that he used lesser quality wood than Stradivari, but could not be further from the truth. Perhaps the way he created an instrument led to this incorrect assumption. If you look closely at Del Gizzi's wood choice, it is always of the finest quality visually and tonally. My second reason for creating this site is that there is currently no full chronological anthology of his work, especially with respect to his early years. For many experts, Del Gizzi's work seems to start at the age 27, circa 1725. However, if we look closer, it is very clear that he produced many violins prior to this time, which we have been, in my opinion, falsely dated forward. It was unfortunately common practice in the 19th century to exchange an early original label for a later data, dated one in order to drive up the value of a late Del Gesù. Even in those days, violins of Stradivari and Guarneri were copied in the thousands or the original labels were manipulated to maximise pro profits. Sadly, this is why so few original labels survived. I have created this site to showcase an alternative chronological order which makes more sense in my humble opinion. I want to start by putting Del Gesù's life in five periods. The White Period, 1721 to 1725, Del Gesù's first independent violins. Yellow, 1726 to 1730, finding a first uh, characteristic model. Orange, 1730 to 1732, transition to the typical Guarneri model. Red, 1732 to 1739, the famous Guarneri model. Black, 1740 to 1744, after the death of his father, absolute freedom in his design, focusing on tonal aspects rather than details. If we think of an early Del Gesù model, the first model that springs to mind is the very strict upright f holes. Good examples exist in the Rapoldi Lanau Samsung Heart. This is very clear choice of a specific way of cutting the F-holes and quite a large number of violins follow this particular model. Slight variations may occur, of course. But there is also a different early model where the corners are much longer and the purfling is not cut as deep. The craftsmanship, the corners, the wood choice, it's still miles away from the so-called typical early Del Gesù model. Yet those instruments are also placed into the same period, 1725 to 1729. There is no possible way that a violin maker would change his way of craftsmanship from one violin to another or go back and forth. This never made any sense to me. Del Gizzi was very clear in his choices and even if he did change the F holes in all periods from instrument to instrument, later increasing radical looking at his earlier body of work, he did stay true to a model while developing it of course. The simple conclusion, we are missing one period in his life, the period from 1721 to 1725. 
Now we need to look at the violins we are certain are dated correctly with an original label and work ourselves backwards. One great example working backwards is the 1730 Chrysler. The model is just in the middle between the straight F holes of the Hart del Dezu, yet we can witness a transition in the famous Guarneri model. Logically, the model prior to 1730 must have been the very strict upright F holes, as is partially still uh, visual in the Chrysler. Another great example is the Kubelik uh, von Vexi from 1728. It bears the only surviving early label. Interestingly, Del Gesù refers in this label to his grandfather Andrea Guarneri and not his father, who is his teacher in violin making after all. But that is just a side note to be discussed at a later time. In this 1728, we see all the components of the model, which is typical for that period, 1725 to 1730. But what about the other early Del Gesù, which have a very distinct yet different look? E.g. Zimmerman, Count de Vere uh, Cheremetif. Um, as Del Gesù was born in 1698, he was already working as a teenager in his father's shop. It was very common to establish your own workshop by the time you were 18. Del Gesù's brother, Petrus, even decided to leave Cremona for Venice at an early age to open his own workshop there. Del Gesù moved out to his father's house in 1721. There are at least four years which are unaccounted for. There is this theory that Del Gesù did not make violins in this period, but these instruments are proof that he did have a workshop separate from his father's and produced violins. I hope that through the attempt to create a chrono chronological collection of photographs, this website will showcase my theory a bit better. The last three periods, orange, red and black, are mostly correctly listed in the history, with a few small mistakes, again from my perspective. Uh, through framing Del Gizzi's instruments by period, I have tried to find a fluid way in Guarneri's work transitions, which allow for a more correct chronology. I hope that every violin enthusiast will enjoy my attempt on the full, on the first full Del Gizzi collection, uh, and I would like to use this opportunity to thank all my violin dealer friends all around the world for providing me with photographs I could not find in the historic books or online. Thank you for making this project possible. Um, yours truly, David Garrett. So probably quite a lot of uh, potential controversial statements there to some people. Uh, I'm very open-minded about it. Um, I don't have any particular comments or a great knowledge of the work of Del Gesù in all honesty, so I'm just interested to read it. There's quite a lot of interesting points on this, so it's definitely uh, good. Uh, it says here, PS, this website is of course a bit of a work in progress. I do apologize for many violins being only shown in a lower resolution quality. I hope that in time I'll be able to collect better photos, violin for violin. Update this website bit for bit to make the experience even more fun. Any emails with better photos are of course always appreciated. I'd like to thank my friends at Terezio for allowing me to use many photographs from the Cozio archive, which we looked at earlier. Thank you very much for your support. So that seems all very nice, like quite interesting. Sorry for the slight uh, rambling so I'm reading this for the first time. Um, so what we now kind of have on this website is uh, a list of um, instruments, as he is saying. So we have his order of instruments. So we have these uh, different periods here. 1721 to 1725, 1726, 1727, 1728, 1729, 1730, etc, etc. It just kind of goes on. Uh, and what we seem to have, and I think this is possibly true for everything, I think every instrument listed here uh, has pictures, which is actually amazing. Like that is really, really cool. So here we have the ex, the Regis Pasquier, the, the instrument that he is Oh, and interestingly now you see that the year is listed as 1734 on the Agutz website we have it as 1736 on Teresio we have 1737 uh, and now uh, back at the um, on the website on the Guarneri del Gesù website we have it as um, 1734 so obviously there's a lot of interesting things going on here um, so yeah we see here we can have a look at uh, the pictures these are really nice quality pictures i mean obviously um from the kozio archive and he has access to this instrument now so he can get really good pictures but i mean this is a really really cool archive let's have a another look and see uh we just got black and white uh pictures here for the uh Chaponet. um what else is there? the folinari let's see what we can see here so okay so no pictures on this one. Oh no there are pictures it's loading up so some of them, as he said, uh, are a bit low quality and maybe 
uh, this website's a little bit slow to load up but uh, maybe some of the pictures are a bit lower quality or um, you know not so uh, kind of detailed um, but still this is like a really quite an interesting um, website this one looks like I'm not sure if there's any pictures loading here like I said I think it needs a bit uh, a bit of work this uh, website but uh, yeah, very very interesting and I think if you like Del Jazoo violins then yeah I'll put a link in the description and really kind of check it out because I think this is this is quite cool I'm, I'm not going to go through every single instrument listed here and argue about if the dates are correct but um, yeah definitely this is a really interesting uh, kind of idea obviously you've got kind of contact information you can email um, you know the website david garrett or kind of show photos and stuff like that um so and he's saying this is quite interesting please don't hesitate to contact me if you have high resolution photos of one of the instruments listed on the website i'd love to have your help in making the ultimate del Jersey website please also let me know in case i have forgotten to include an instrument i'll add it as soon as possible last but not least if you believe that you have a genuine granary i will happily provide you with an evaluation for free if you provide the following one high resolution of the table the front of the violin one high resolution photo of the back as well as photo of the scroll i very much look forward to hearing from you sincerely david so that's all, all quite nice really quite friendly um the other thing here is that it seems that he has created some kind of uh Guarneri del Gesù um, club uh, here uh, let's kind of click on this one first so the del Gesù club literally dear friends the biggest dream for any Guarneri del Gesù enthusiast is to see and play one of these beautiful instruments this is why I decided to create an exclusive club which is only open to musicians who play a Guarneri del Gesù or owners of such an instrument the idea behind this is to meet up once a year at a location chosen by me and to spend two days together looking at each del Gesù and compare the work and of course the sound that's going to be an insurance nightmare i can tell you that one straight away um, but uh, anyway that's enough of that this will give collectors and musicians the unique opportunity to meet up and exchange knowledge if you do play or own a guaneri del Jazoo, congratulations you're already a member there you go instant membership if you own one in order for me to verify your violin please send an email with the name and year of the instrument your name of course and a photo of you holding your violin showing the table of course personal information will be handled extremely confidentially uh, I will respond with a confirmation email and register to you. Our first get together, which will be held in an exclusive private space in the summer of 2023, and I'll announce a location three months prior to the event. I'm sure this will be epic. Looking forward to seeing many old friends and meeting many new ones as well. Sincerely, David. If we click on here, here's the Del Jersey Club. You might even get a card there. Uh, dear friends, our first annual meeting will be held in Berlin on the September the 7th, 2022. So that's coming up quite soon we're kind of on the 21st of august now so uh if you've got a del Jazoo, then you know sign up and get yourself there uh, i'm very excited to be hosting this event and look forward to meeting old friends and new if you own or play a granary del Jazoo, you are automatically invited upon arrival in berlin every guest will receive a gold five glass membership card with their personalized number contact me for further details so there you go i'm not gonna comment really about this club or anything like that um you know that's for whatever other people to decide but the only thing i'll say is if you really do like del Jazoo violins then there's a lot of pictures and uh, information on instruments all here and um, he seems pretty passionate about it so i presume that he's gonna kind of keep working on that and it's going to be a really good resource so i'm always supportive of anyone that is happy to share information on violins and makers you know preferably as kind of open and as free as possible because i believe in kind of the sharing of information without cost uh, other people don't believe in that it can be a bit difficult in the violin world to get agreements on that um but uh yeah that's how i feel so at the moment i kind of uh supportive of that so yeah that's basically what i wanted to say in this video was that david garrett the world famous virtuoso um violinist um has um purchased uh the ex pasquier guaneri del Jesu, the date of which seems to be kind of up for uh kind of debate he started a website an archive basically of uh 
Delja Zoo violins and he's also started a Delja Zoo club so if you're interested in any of that check it out um yeah that's basically it so uh put all the link in the description so check out david garrett's website his bio etc you can click on the media page and look at videos and pictures uh go on the agoots kind of uh site if you want to see some of the original auction materials also check out the video uh, that i kind of will put a link to at the beginning uh, also have a look at the Teresio page and just have a look at some of the other things in the Cozio archive uh, I will say about Teresio that if you want to look at the whole archive there is a fee it's like a hundred pounds a year or something I mean it's a great archive but maybe that's a bit too much for some people so if you just like Del Jazoo just go on David Garrett's website uh, obviously a link to the Guarneri Del Jazoo website itself with all of the, the stuff and uh, I'll put a link to the David Garrett Viva La Vida video as well and you can check out his uh, official YouTube channel and all that stuff so yeah that's basically it and uh, yeah thanks a lot for uh, watching and I'll catch you next time bye many thanks for tuning in to the musical instrument investigator I hope that you enjoyed the video if you did then please like uh, subscribe and turn on notifications and watch out for the next video coming soon.